sure you remember the airport that you're flying into is D-A-L-D-F-W. I'm telling you, you, you don't want to miss this move of the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all like to fly? How many of y'all enjoy that fly? Atlanta, Georgia is on the bottom right of the fly. That's Atlanta, Georgia that you see at the bottom of right of that fly. Man, these meetings are going to be so fun. Man, it's just going to be amazing how you'll be able to feel the tangibility of Jesus so strong. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be f spectacular, phenomenal. And this is a historical, uh, historical meeting.
My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior always there for me, my God he was. How many of y'all know that song? And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share while we tarry there. None other shall ever. with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tell me there none other has ever known be lifted higher be lifted higher be lifted
is Christ. Christ the Lord. Jesus what a friend of sinners Jesus love of my soul friends may fail me falls a sell me he my savior makes me whole hallelujah what a savior hallelujah what What a strength in weakness Let me hide myself in Him Tempted, tried, and so He, my strength, my victory wins Hallelujah, what a Savior Hallelujah
chapter 21 verse 6 says this the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is, is vanity tossed to and fro Hold on, let me see something let me see something real quick brother got a turn on that. Glory to God. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Sorry, I'm playing. I'm joking around. <laughs> I'm playing around. I'm playing. Jessica! Jessica got supernatural anointing on. Supernatural anointing Financial anointing. Financial anointing. Proverbs chapter 21 says this. Look at this, saints. It says, uh, the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Now, the getting of treasures is money, is large money as well. Remember Isaiah 45 talked about the treasures of darkness? This is talking about the um, large money. Look what it say right here. It say that the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is vanity. Now, saints, I want to take you to this word vanity. Um, which another word for vanity is also vain. Which is V-A-I-N. Vain, right? Meaning like it's, it's none effect, like it doesn't avail to nothing, like it, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't be done. It's not going to produce any eternal benefit. It's vanity. It's vain. Um, remember what you have in your blood is veins. All right? So I, I want to take you here to show you how there's another bloodline to get money. And that bloodline is darkness. That bloodline is where Adam became a hustler. See, see, uh, it's hard out here for... Taraji, get out of here. And Terrence Howard, get out of here. Um, the hustler realm came upon man's bloodline after God kicked them out of what was the financial flow. The financial flow was carrying all those things that will keep them from having to hustle. So saints, I, I want you to understand that hustle lifestyle is not divine. 
Hustle is the sweat of the brow productivity. Is the sweat of the brow mindset. Now, saints, remember what God told Adam, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat. The sweat of the brow is a realm in the demonic kingdom. Sweat of the brow is one of the gates of hell's functionalities. Think about this. When he said that by the sweat of your brow, this is a gate in hell. So, so watch this. Adam switched from Christ. On this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He switched from the Christ revelation, Adam, and stepped into the crisis revelation. And the crisis is where the gates of hell is prevailing. So you got to hustle and try to make it feel all right while the gates of hell prevail against you. Saints, do you know if somebody is rich with money and then they still don't got Jesus? Do you know that the gates of hell still prevail against them? But the money will, will, will tell them, no, it's not, it's not, it's not. But if, if you don't got Jesus, if Jesus didn't give you the power to get that wealth, that wealth will torment you. And so, so you'll have to, uh, every now and again, pull on that wealth for a little temporary uh, relief from believing that it's true. But then you got to come to grips because your soul's still empty. Your soul's still unhappy. You still don't got no peace of mind. It says the treasures, get the getting of treasures, that's the getting of wealth, the getting of money, by a lying tongue. Saints, do you understand what a lying tongue is? It means that you're in the bloodline of Satan. Remember, uh, Satan is the father of lies. So it means that you're in the bloodline of Satan. It means that Satan is your father now. And the, Satan is doing what he did with Jesus. He said, bow down to me, I give you all the kingdoms of this world. Saints, do you know all those kingdoms was the Babylonian system? All those kingdoms was the Babylonian system. Remember he told the Lord. Bow down and worship me. Now saints. Let's go here. Because Jesus says something that's real suspicious. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus says something that, that make you look and say, wait, Jesus, you, you really meant to say that? Or, 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 or there was a tingling. Was it a, was it a tingling? Got the hat of got it? Okay, let's go to verse... 7 in Matthew 4. Look what it said. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now, saints, if Jesus said that, why would Jesus say that if he wasn't tempted. I want you to see this. 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 Let's go to Hebrews 4.15. Let's go to Hebrews 4.15. We just went to, um, we just went to Matthew 4.7. Four six four seven. Now let's go to Hebrews four seven, four four fifteen. Uh, Pastor Joshua Holmes. No, don't call me that. I don't. I don't, I don't want to hear. Shop 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 shop. Let's go to Hebrews chapter four. Let's go to Hebrews chapter four. Look at this here. Let's go to verse 15. It says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Saints, let me just tell you this. Let me, let me tell you something. 
when the word of God just told us that he was tempted in all points. That means he was tempted in sex. It means that he was tempted in lying. It means that he, he was tempted to betray. He was tempted to quit. Look, look when he said, Father, take this cup from me. He's being tempted to be discouraged. He's being tempted. Saints, I want to say something to you to quicken you. Jesus was tempted financially as well. He was tempted financially. Jesus was tempted in the financial anointing. And children, you want to remember this so that uh, as you grow in wisdom and you're going on with the supernatural money anointing on your life as it's getting heavier and stronger because you honoring God, you hearing the knowledge of God, you hearing the word of God, what the word got to say about it. And so faith coming by hearing, but, but power coming by faith. You caught that? Faith coming by hearing, but power coming by faith. That's why the word of God said, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Faith coming by hearing, but power coming by faith. So when, when you're hearing, your faith is actually anointing you. When you're hearing, you're, you're receiving the spirit of faith. But when you have faith, you're receiving the anointing. Because the power is flowing through that faith. Now, now watch this here. Not only does the power flow through faith, but the glory, if you master that faith, it, 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 now the glory start moving through that faith. Now there's an intensity. There's a fire moving. If you remember, what did Jesus tell Mary them? If you believe, you'll see the, you'll see the, uh, the glory of God. If you, be, if you believe, that's, that's faith. You'll see the glory. So now, now this faith is bringing the glory into manifestation. And you know the anointing where God worked through you. But the glory is when God worked for you. So the glory is um, in intensity with a power so strong that the Lord start doing stuff without even your body. See, saints, the glory realm of finances is where the Lord start doing stuff for you financially and you're not even present. Because, see, you done did your part. You done built up that anointing. You done stepped into uh, kingdom methods. Kingdom methodology, kingdom flow. You're a kingdom citizen. You got kingdom grace flowing on you. So while the kingdom flowing through you to sow and to honor and to walk in the spirit, that when the glory hits you, now stuff going to start happening for you in the nighttime while you're sleeping. What Mark chapter 4 verse 26, 27, 28 is talking about when the man... He, he became kingdom minded. He started sowing seed. And when he became kingdom minded and started sowing seed, then the word of God said, now the seed while he was sleeping, it growed up. So what does that show you? The seed is, is, is moving. The seed is evolving while you ain't even doing nothing with it. Now, let me just say something to you. When you sow, don't dig up your seed. And how do you dig up your seed? You go ask for loans. Let me help you, children. Let me help you. Let me help you, children. Let me help you. If I sow $50 and I go get a loan for $50, I just digged up my seed. So I, I, I can't get no harvest on that seed. I just digged it up. And watch this. Here's what I just did. And Satan would trick me into doing that. Here's what I just did. I just switched it from seed to arms. 
If you, if, if you listen to me, you'll, you'll become wise. I'm helping you. I'm helping you. I really am. I'm not trying to shout on hell or nothing like that. I, I want to help you. I want to give you vital revelation that will change your life so that you can dominate and walk in these uh, financial anointings of Jesus. All of the money mantles of Jesus. You won't go from glory to glory in that financial grace of God. You want that grace to keep on intensifying. If you sow $50 and you get a loan for $50, you just dug up your seed and you just, you just converted it from seed to alms. Because the Bible say when you give to the poor, you receive exactly back what you gave. So if I give $50 and I get a loan for $50, I, I go apply for a loan and I get back $50, I just um, change the, 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 um, the subject in which that giving took place in. It went from seed where I was going to receive a harvest to arms where I only received back what I gave. And this is what a lot of children of God have done and they have messed up with the overflow. Because listen, if I switch my seed to arms, I'm just going to receive back what I gave. So how will I increase? No, I'm just going to get back what I gave. So I'm not increasing. Here's how you know when you sow in seed. Because you'll become a respecter of time. Write this down. This how you know that um, the confirmation that you sow in seed is that you become a respecter of time. See, if I'm not a respecter of time, I'm not sowing seed. Because it's seed time. But see, if I sow and I go borrow and get back what I just sowed, I just, I'm not in seed. I'm in arms. So I'm only going to get back what I gave. So I'm not going to increase. So if I gave $100 and I borrowed $100, I am still at the $100. I haven't increased. But if I give $100, I can get $10,000. I can get $5,000. I can get $1,000. But if I get back the $100, I'm not in seed. I'm in arms. So I'm only qualified in the spiritual law to get back what I gave. So when you sowing, you got to become a respecter of time. Because time means that you're permitting the Holy Ghost to do his work to bring you into the financial level that you're supposed to be in now. Because when you wear small financial clothes and they don't fit you no more and the demons looking at you and see that they can't fit you. The demons know when you're supposed to be high financially. Even the demons know. The demons be like, <laughs> they don't know that their financial level is too small right now. God trying to do more for them. I hope they don't wake up. I hope they don't realize that their pants busting. They are trying to fit the belt on Forget you ladies that don't got that problem and you men that don't got that problem. You be trying to pay. <laughs> trying to pit on that small pants. That pants said, loose me in Jesus' name. Then you pay on that pants, you bust out loud and ha! Your pants done. <laughs> you know Listen, as soon as you bust out laughing, your pants done broke open. You trying to hide it. I need to use the restroom. No, you don't need to lose no restroom. You need to stay right here. We, we come to reflect you for wearing the pants too small. Then you know that clothes was out of season. You know it was out of season. We come to reflect you. We come to tell you. The pants done flew off. Because you done laugh too loud. God pitch you around a comedian on purpose. <laughs> That's how God works. He works in mysterious ways. They'll pitch you around a comedian so your pants can bust open. Because you ain't going to laugh. You ain't going to laugh enough. Ooh. Ah! Your pants done bust open. It done fell open. Yeah, I need to go to the restroom. You got a towel? 
Now we ain't giving you no towel. We we want we want be sure your sins will find you out. This was a sin. You know God trying to give you a new wardrobe, but you gotta sow your way. You gotta sow your way into this. See, see, you holding yourself up. Saints, let, let me give you a secret. Being broke invites a lot of demonic activity in your mind. You know how? Because even if you ain't got no money to buy no clothes, right? And you, the clothes that you got getting too small for you, you gaining weight. Now the devil start come tormenting you. I need to, I need to work out. You up there in the morning up there. Early in the morning, the dog sleeping. Everybody's sleeping. Everybody and their mama sleeping. You up there trying to work out because the devil tell you that your shirt too small, that, you, that your chest, your nipples, your, your chest. Your back, your back can't fit it no more. Your back fat. Now nah, the Holy Ghost got clothes for that back fat, baby. That back fat, God going to deal with that back fat. If he gave it to you, he shall surely supply your need. God knew when he was giving you the back fat that he was going to supply the support for the back fat. You're up there trying to do all these workouts, all these weird workouts. You know that workout and, and the train up there just, just getting all your money, tricking you. The trainer just tricking you, got you doing all these weird workouts while he watching you. Tell him, come on, give me five more. Uh-huh. Yeah, give me two more of them. Uh-huh. And you up there hurt. You up there hurt like a mug, you hurt. It talks, come on, yeah, give me about two more. Uh-huh, yeah, I need two more of them, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh, all right, come on, come on, two steps next up. Two steps, let's stop now. Two steps, let's stop. <laughs> and then, the, then your mama, your mama know that you're being abused by the trainer. She come out of nowhere in her gym short. Ah, shandele mose kitele. Share Monday. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Don't let him use you. Don't let him use you. The devil trying to use you. Get off, my daughter. The devil trying to use you. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Come on, Theo. Don't look at him. You're not going to go to no trainer either, baby. He, he going to abuse you too. Come on, Theo. See, being broke invites a lot of demons. Because, see, when, when, when God start giving you a little fat and, you know, he give you a little weight, your clothes can't fit you, then the devil up there tormenting you, telling some, baby, you, got, you can't eat no food today. You, you got to starve today. You got to lose this weight. And, and really what God will do is just give you a new wardrobe. You understand? I'm telling you the benefits of listening to God financially right now. Don't wait until you get into a financial rut to listen to God. You know, that's what some people do. They wait till they need a miracle. You ever seen them people tell us and pray, I need a financial miracle. What is we praying for? Uncle Shirley? We're not praying for something that God done gave us the strategy to unlock. We pray when we ignorant of the strategy. Prayer gives you strategies. Wisdom, rather, gives you strategies. But prayer gives you wisdom. You caught that? So when you pray for finances, you out of pocket. You see? When you pray for finances and provisions... You out of pocket. You're not even supposed to pray for money. You're supposed to decree money. But see, you ain't going to have the authority to decree. You ain't going to have the... Get off of me, Jamaican spirit. Poking beans spirit. Your rice and peas, nigga, spirit. 1159 spirit. I'll tell you the truth. I can't hang with no Jamaicans or no island people. I don't hang with them no way. Island people are proud. The brother can have on sandals with no straps on it, ashy ankles and ashy knees, and he'll still talk about you like a dog. But brother, you can't afford no lotion until you... Because of me and my people, we are dignified. But look at him feet. It don't look like you dignified. It look like you've been digging. Now, you got to get the fired out. 
It looks like you've been digging, all right? Since you ever noticed that, people, people, listen. I can't hang with no island people. Island people proud. And saints, even when they say that they receive Jesus, they still got that pride that Jesus got delivered them from that they don't know in them. Me and my family. We. And then them and their family be fighting like dogs. But they, they got to impress you. Island people. You know, you, you know the vibes. They be fighting like dogs. You ask your family for two dollars in there. I can't give no two dollars. But then, then if we the family, you know, it's all, it's all about image and impressing. Now I know how to. I know how it go, man. I've been around island people. I've been around all types of people. Saints, culture carries a spirit. That's why I don't represent no culture. This Jesus culture, my karantere, replish the antono stredefesh the plesh the tilesh. You want to adapt to Jesus' culture. Jesus got a culture for your life. Culture carries a spirit. Most times you try to go find out about your culture, you become more disrespectful and lack manners because your culture is, 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 is vagabondish or, or it, it caused you to be a vagabond. Now, say something that you want to catch about Cain for the Lord to call him a vagabond and a fugitive. This was before America's Most Wanted and, and Wash. What his name was? John Wash? <laughs> well, he was wanted for it. I think him and Maury is cousins. I think, that, see, there's a reason why a lot of people be on shows. Jerry Springer, Maury, and, and what his name? John Wash, America's Top, America's Most Wanted. Saying some of y'all, you... you They, they all got that voice. I think they related. John Walsh used to be like, yeah, he cut her neck off and he's still running. We saw him at the neck bone shop. If anybody have seen the picture of him at the neck bone shop, give us a call at 1-800-we-trying-to-snap-a-nigga.com and give us a call. Let us know where we're, we're... Since you can't be around black people and you want it, they see your name, they see your picture on them, uh, 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 on, on the screen, you looking at them, they looking at you, you looking at them, they looking at you, you hoping that they don't say nothing, you like, uh, uh, that's you right there? Yeah, yeah that's, that, but, but you ain't gonna do, nah, I ain't gonna do nothing, you know how we roll. I ain't gonna do nothing. You sure you ain't gonna do nothing? Nah, nah, you cool with me, go to sleep, baby. John Walsh, we got me over here, he over here, he wearing an orange, he wearing an orange jumpsuit, he just escaped the jail at 5 p.m., is in the time right now is eleven fifty nine. I'm calling you. It's time. It's time for Theo to go to jail. <laughs> Theo, mama, Theo, mama, hear from a distance that he going to jail. Theo, mama, jump out. Ah, Masha, Kondele, Keste. The devil is a liar. The blood, the blood. Theo done ran out in his orange jumpsuit. Helicopters all across the neighborhood looking for Theo. Theo saw Michael Jordan symbol on some shoes. So Theo said, let me do what I saw Michael Jordan do. So Theo got to one of the gates. There was a canine dog chasing after him. He jumped over the gates. He saw Michael Jordan do it too. And when he got to the gate, <laughs> the gate hit him in his chin and he fell back. He had to get stitches that night. Then they took him in in the morning. Gate the gate. He ain't, he ain't even get over the gate. Theo hit his chin. He, his knees, none of that. He was supposed to go higher than that. He, but he saw Michael Jordan symbol on the Jordans that the hustle man had brought to him the other day. He saw Michael Jordan up in there. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 19, verse. Um, let's go to Proverbs chapter 19, verse um, 14. Proverbs 19, 14. It says, houses and riches. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. 
Oh, this scripture, lovely, man. I'm in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 14. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Gospel money cometh to you right now. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Do you know how powerful this is? The word of God is letting you hear that this is the inheritance of fathers. Now watch this here. I want to show you something. So according to the, the spirit, biblically, according to Bible uh, uh, prophecy and promise, Abraham is your father. But Abraham has now placed his blessing upon you. So watch this. It says that houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Abraham is a father. And he received both of these realms in abundance, houses and riches. But look at what happens, children. Now, he put the blessing of these houses and riches on you. And then Jesus confirmed it. He said, all that are in Christ are the seed of Abraham. Oh, my God. Saints, I want you to hear this. The, fa the Father, God Almighty, the Father, is not the only one that left you an inheritance. Abraham left you an inheritance as your father as well. Saints. <laughs> you might have four daddies that's all in the spirit. No, no cap, no carnality. You might have four anointed daddies in the spirit when it's all said and done. You might, you're you going to have the father in heaven. You're going to have Abraham. You're going to have your prophet of God. And, and, and if you, if you married to someone else or something like that, you'll have, you know, the fourth daddy. <laughs> Saints, let's go to second Kings real quick. Oh, my gosh. My gosh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at this. I want to give you a lot of words tonight. I want to show you something in the word of God that's real strong. I want to show you that something that's real heavy. Be bold Got more words than he got about it. Look at this. I want to show you something real powerful. Hey, where well, Elijah was dead? I need Elijah to be dead. I was, Elijah, you still living right here. You need to be dead. I need to find where you dead. Trying to find where now you can. You're talking to Ahab and Jesse. You can't tell no 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 gangster about the Bible. Gangster be you said talk to Ahab and Jezebel. He said Ahab and Jeezy. No, I ain't talking about young Jeezy. I said Jezebel. Oh, I thought you said Jeezy. I thought you were talking about Jeezy got an album coming out. Yeah, I had just bought the tape. I bought Jeezy, Jeezy. young Jeezy. I thought he retired. Jeezy came out bought his tape. Like you're talking about Jesus done came out with another album or something. That's what I thought you was talking about. When Jesus done came out with another album. Shoot, I'm still trying to find this text. I can't, I can't believe it. Somebody done stole a piece of my Bible. That's what happened. It's not, it's not that I don't know where it's at. Somebody done stole a piece of my Bible out the page. That's what happened. A Rottweiler religious spirit, a Rottweiler, a Rottweiler religious spirit. That's what happened, Rottweiler. 
Right while the religious spirit you hear your page flipping at it. Is it right while the religious? The right while the religious spirit. You can't get no crack in no Bible. They'll sell one of the pages for 50 cents. <laughs> this, this is the book of Timothy. This, no, this is the book of Thomas. This is a lost scroll. You take it, Thompson. Really? How much is it? Man, I'm giving $50 a pop. $50 a pop. But you, you can't read it until you buy it. You get, give me this. They're talking some the book of Ecclesiastes. This is Ecclesiastes. Listen, listen, ma'am. I ain't tell you that it wasn't that. I just told you what I felt it should be. It's the book of Thomas because I'm selling it. The book of Thomas because I'm selling it to you. So, so. Now, let's go here. We in our uh, second Kings chapter two. Now, let's go to verse 11. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Let's go to verse 12. And Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father. You notice he didn't say father, father. He said, my father, my father. The Lord sends him a personal father, a personal daddy. That he could receive DNA inheritance and authority from. So I want you to see this. What, what did Elijah do? He transferred his spirit to Elisha, right? So Abraham being your father, what did he do? He transferred his spirit to you. And his spirit is gospel money coming to you. His spirit is debt cancellation. His spirit is more than enough. His spirit is a land flowing with milk and honey. His spirit is very rich in silver and gold and cattle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the spirit of Abraham coming on you has caused all financial mantles to be accessible to you in this life. The spirit of Abraham being given to you You are his seed. He your father. Now you have access to houses and riches. Let's go to the word of God again. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Now I want to get stronger on here because I feel a strong God anointing right now. Prophet Joshua Holmes is your modern day Abraham. I'm your visible Abraham. I'm going to say this again. I'm your visible Abraham. I'm your spiritual. Oh my gosh. I I'm going to say something that's strong here. And your earthly father. You on earth, right? So what I'm teaching you right now. Is to give you power to possess the houses and the riches. Like the word of God said. And saints, we can't miss this. Let me just show you something. In Proverbs chapter 19, we can say that this is for the year 2019. Remember this, that this is the year that you received the power of God for houses and riches. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
This is the year that you have received the transference for houses and riches. It's a transference from your father. The father, your, your father gives you that glory, that power, that wisdom to take authority and possess the houses and the riches. Now, look what Psalm 112, 3 say. In my uh, uh, wealth and riches shall be in his house. So, so Psalm 112, verse 3, couples with Proverbs 19, 14. Because it says, houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Then Psalm 112, verse 3, said that wealth and riches shall be in your house. So it shows you how Psalm 112, verse 3 is going to happen. If you, how, how could Psalm 113, uh, 112, 3 happen if you're not in a house? Or you never own a house? But Proverbs 19, 14 reveals how Psalm 112 is going to be able to, to even take place. Because the wealth and riches is going to be in your house. Because Proverbs 19, 14, you're receiving a transference from your father, the wisdom for you to take a hold of the house and the riches that's going to be in there. And saints, remember I told you wealth and riches are not the same thing. I didn't know this until the Lord spoke to me. Riches is God overflowing you with money. But wealth is where God has established you to overflow others with money. That, that's a fresh, that's a fresh definition. I ain't, I ain't say that, uh, I ain't say it like that last time. That's a fresh definition. Riches is where God is supplying you, but wealth is where you're supplying others. Oh my God. Remember the blessing of the Lord maketh rich? So it's making you rich. Riches is where God is dealing with you, bringing you into harvest, bringing you to, into abundance. But wealth is where God is using you to bring others into abundance. So, so when they say wealth and riches shall be in your house, riches mean that's money that you're going to be able to enjoy. But wealth, ah, wealth is the anointing for you to cause others, for you to cause others, for you to cause others to experience overflow in their finances. Money coming. To me now. You see that? You see that? Because the wealth, the wealth, the wealth, the wealth. So we didn't say that the wealth of the sinner. See, the sinner have been helping their fellow sinners become uh, partakers of money. So it's the wealth of the sinner because that sinner was he be, he became wealthy according to the satanic system. So they go get their fellow gang members and they go get their fellow hood members and they go get their fellow girlfriends that's not serving God and they bring them up. Now you understand what goes on in the world. The world go get their fellow brethren that's not in the fear of God and they bring them up financially. They give them opportunities. So it's the wealth of the sinner. It, it, but it's really laid up for the just because you're supposed to lend and not borrow. You're supposed to lend and be gracious, Psalm 112. Say, you're supposed to be the one doing that. Your apostle is a divine, visible bank. A divine, visible bank. The minister of finances know your apostle. The minister of finances has a briefcase that's carrying your next financial explosion. And if I listen to God with my sewing, it don't matter what evil reports say, I can possess all things, all money levels, all financial levels, because this is what I'm pitting in the hands of Jesus. If I'm pitting my money in the hands of Jesus, I'm pitting my money 
into the multiplication grace of God. And the grace of God, the, the ability of God is going to multiply what I give him. And when it come back to me, it's going to come back to me resurrected. It, when it left me, it died. It was crucified through my sowing decision. But when it come back to me, it's resurrected. And, and, and see, the Bible said that you may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. And we, we, we won't deal with that. But then it says in the power of his resurrection. This go for finances too. The resurrected Jesus now broke. The resurrected Jesus not in poverty. The resurrected Jesus don't got no financial demons. 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 No fi no financial. No fine. No fi no financial demons. No financial demons. The resurrected Jesus rules over principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age and the spiritual awakeness in the heavenly places. The resurrected Jesus. The resurrected Jesus don't got no financial issues. No financial issues. No financial issues. The resurrected Jesus is a ruler over heaven and earth. Remember Jesus said, all power and authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. It's the resurrected Jesus. The power of his resurrection carries wealth. Gospel money cometh to you right now. The resurrected Jesus and the power of his resurrection carries strong money power that the world, the flesh, the devil can't stop. When you are sore, the Lord will quicken your life into the perfect will of God for you. It don't matter what you have done, what people have done to you, what you have experienced. The Holy Ghost will divinely honor you and he'll invest wisdom and strength and protection and a new path and a new life to you. And he'll give it to you because you have chosen to trust him, not only with your words, not only with your vocabulary, but with your money, with your substance, with your livelihood. Sowing is financial repentance. Robbing God is the worst thing that you could do. Traditional people rob God all the time. Traditional people. Saints, you ever met them people say, you know, it's not about money. You know, I just love the Lord with all my heart, soul, body, with all my wigs, twigs, and figs. I love the Lord with all of me. Man, I feel the anointing going down my right arm. Hata papa kasha pala, nepro stekele stula ma kantele, ropo sete kandele vosia. Somebody receiving miracle money on here. I ain't praying. I ain't playing. My daughter Jamila done received it. Jessica done received miracle money. Huh? To, uh, to, uh, what's her name? Uh, um, start with a T. To, 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 uh, to, Tam, her name, my gosh. Tamri, Tamri. How can I forget her name? She received miracle money over $1,500. No, no, you saw the testimonies. You saw it with your own eyes. Tamia, thank you. Money coming to me now. Come on. Money coming to me now. Somebody receiving financial miracles on here. God, listen, the same way there's a death angel, there's a death canceling angel. And when that debt cancellation angel see your sewing account, that debt canceling angel gonna cancel all your debts. 
Saints, there is an anointing. I done had this happen to me, so I, I, I'm not trying to figure this out. I done had this happen to me in my life. I have sold and received a high credit score off of my sewing. I've had debt canceled. I remember one time, I didn't even know I had debt. <laughs> and I think it was over, I don't know if it was $7,000 that was canceled. But it, listen, it was an accumulation of different stuff. It wasn't just uh, 7,000 debt. It was other means. All of the different companies canceled. There's an anointing for debt cancellation when you're listening to Jesus with the seed. Saints, this is the life. This is the life. See, saints, look at them people that come, try to come check prosperity. Now, why are they so sad? Why are they so mad? You ever, you ever notice them people, how tormented they are? That they're always telling so why, why they spend all their time trying to fight us? We, because they're not happy. See, if you're happy, you're not going to be fighting no daggone body. No, even if I know you're in error, what am I going to fight you for? Because I'm enjoying myself. I'm just going to give you the offer to come out of error. But if you don't want to come out of error, it ain't going to stop my joy. I'm still going to eat, drink, and be mad. I'm still going to go to sleep. Right? You're not, you're not going to stop me from being happy. But if I'm unhappy, I'm going to be tormented. I'm going to cause trouble. I'm going to go to and fro. That's what unhappiness does. Happiness is a realm of wisdom. And it causes you to be peaceful, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sometimes I think about, you know, there's times when you're a wise person, God lets you look at your life. Saints, saints, let me tell you something. You know how Michael Jordan got all them championship rings? I got more championship rings than him and LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal and all of them put together. Because we, we supernatural champions, glory to God. We supernatural champions and we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah, glory to God. When you sowing, you'll become a sowing champion, but God will make you a financial champion. Where you know that you're ruling and reigning with Jesus financially. Your seed in your own finances. You will know that you are a financial champion. Because you'll be able to look at your finances and see how there's no lack. There's no shortage. There's no debt. There's no um, 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 issues. Now, saints, let me just tell you something. I know when I was sowing, God had me ignore my debts. When I, when I was sowing, I know the Lord had me ignore a lot of stuff that would trouble my spirit. Because when your spirit is wounded, you can't sow and you can't listen to God. Let me tell you something. A wounded spirit isolates itself from the Lord Jesus. A wounded spirit does not move in divine weapons. A wounded spirit is adversarial to your momentum. A wounded spirit Pits God on mute. You, you got to keep your spirit from being wounded. That's why the Bible said, guard your heart with all diligence. Because when your spirit, your spirit get wounded, that's the headquarters of all of your energy, your belief, your trust. You got to trust somebody. The Bible said, believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. If you want to trust anybody in this life, trust, trust the prophet. Because the prophet will see even the people that you think that you could trust. And the prophet will let you know that they're not trustworthy. Huh? Saints, let me just say this. That woman at Zarephath's son was an enemy to that meal. Because if she would have sold it, the enemy would have stayed on her life. Oh my. Uh, that, that just came to me. I never heard that before. I just heard the Lord Jesus speak that to me. Her own son was an enemy. I just heard the Lord say that. Her own son was an enemy to that meal. 
Because if she would have sold it to him, the enemy would have stayed on her life. To get to a financial place that you've never been, you have, have to yield to a financial grace that you have never wore. Let me say it. To get to a financial place that you have never been, you have to yield to a, a financial grace that you have never worn. She had to submit to a financial grace, a sowing grace in that moment. Because that little boy was an adversary to that meal. It wasn't supposed to go in his belly because if it went into his belly, the serpent that's still roaming on his belly would have had right to take that seed in his belly and keep access to the woman as their effect. Oh my God, this all this type of stuff coming to me while I'm preaching. Man, 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 oh my God, my mind is a library. My mind is a library. This is wild. <laughs> It's wild in here. It's wild. It's wild. It's wild. It's wild. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going viral. Don't worry. They're going to take that scene out that I just did. I just helped. I just helped them out. They already think I'm crazy. Well, I might as well be crazy. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Hey, 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 glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory, <laughs> glory to God, glory to God. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this here. I'd rather be crazy for Jesus. You got to be crazy for somebody. You see, the, I saw two women holding hands today, walking together, down the daggone neighborhood. They ain't even want to look over at me. They lay up there and walking, holding each other. I looked at Rosie O'Donnell and Ellen, De Ellen DeGeneres right there. I looked at Rosie and Ellen DeGeneres. And I didn't feel generous at all. And I looked up at the sky. I saw the sun right there. I said, dang, Jesus, you got it. You's a good guy. You, he, you pit up with it. But I know it did come in a day. There's coming a day. There's coming a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's coming a day. Saints, it don't matter. See, this generation, our generation is very strange. It's strange, you know why? Because like, because laws was passed, now everybody acting like it's okay. Even preachers. Preachers be like, don't preach against them. They need to go. They need to. They, they. We're not here to attack them. No, we're not here to attack nobody. We're here to preach the word. It's not attack against nobody. We're not here to attack. This word come to attack every demon spirit that's living in a human body. This word come to evict every foul and unclean spirit that's living in a woman and living inside of a man. This word come to evict every demon spirit that's in your mind, in your body, in your child, in your household. This word come to evict. The Bible said Jesus cast out spirits with a word. This word come to evict every demon in your finances, every demon in your bank account. Let's go ahead. Verse 14. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, you are cursed above all cattle, above all the beasts of the field. Saints, look at this. It says the beast of the field. That's why I told you yesterday that I'm a beast, a financial beast. Because what happens in a field? You sow and plant. You reap harvests. 
My God. Look what the Lord called the serpent. He said that you curse above all the beasts of the what? Of the field. So the beasts are of the field. They're of sowing. They're of planting. They're of honoring God. So the Lord said that you cursed, meaning that you took this serpent for satanic activity. So this serpent is going to be the highest animal represented, uh, re rep uh, representing uh, satanic activity. Saints, I come to tell you that the highest animal in the satanic kingdom that represents satanic activity is the serpent. Above the dragon. Wow. Says so you see his revelation flowing? Every day. So, so let me ask you something. Why sit here and die ever? Because you sit in, 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 in the throne of God. Says, did you see this revelation here? Look what it said. It said that the beast of the field, he cursed, meaning that above every other beast, satanic activity will be displayed through the serpent the most. Wow. Now you know why Jesus said, behold, I give you the power to tread upon serpents. And saints, where are you going to see the scorpion at? In the book of Revelation, the Bible said that they will pray to die. The scorpion appeared in Revelation to torment people. The serpent was in Genesis. The scorpion was in Revelation. The serpent was in Genesis. The scorpion is in Revelation. So it shows you why Jesus said, behold, I give you power to trample over the serpent and the scorpion. I give you the power to trample over what happened in Genesis. And I give you the power to, to trample over the system that's going to start manifesting in Revelation, in the last days, in the end times. It's the spirit of the scorpion that is out with the assignment to release the demonic power upon people so that they'll be blind, so that they'll miss the personal instructions that God given them, for them to miss their profit, for them to lose their soul. Saints, the scorpion is an end time demon. I'm hearing Jesus say this, man. I ain't, I, I ain't planning to talk about this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Holy Ghost did. Ah. The, 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 the serpent was sent for the first man. And the scorpion is sent for the last group of men. For the last batch of men. So the same way we got the, the serpent and the scorpion, what did the serpent do in, in Genesis? Messed up money coming. Messed up her villa. Messed up financial streams. So if the serpent did that in Genesis, what you think the scorpion is doing in the end days? Take away the power of God's systematic law. Take, take away the power of what the kingdom can do so that the children of God will go right back to the bondage of Pharaoh. Because if I don't have my silver and gold, I have to go back to Pharaoh. What did the Lord bring them out? With prayer? No. Did he bring them out with fastings? No. Did he bring them out with intercession? No. He brought them out with their what? Their money, their silver and gold. So if I don't have my money, I have to be subject to Pharaoh because that's the system of Pharaoh that has power over me when I'm not moving in the power to get wealth. 
My God. Saints, are you catching this? The, the only way that the power of Pharaoh could operate over me is if I'm not moving in my power to get wealth. The power to get wealth is to shut and break and destroy and remove the burden and destroy the yoke and cancel all satanic activity to break the work of demons to sit in the heavenly places with Christ so that no feral spirit will be able to hold me in bondage. No evil spirit will be able to ride over my head. What did Psalm 66 verse 12 say? He allowed the wicked to ride over your heads, but thou hast brought us out into a wealthy place. When I get to the wealthy place, nobody can ride over my head because I'm free in Jesus. And that power is moving on me for me to go higher in finances. Gospel money coming to you now. Ho! 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 Gospel money coming to you now. That power to get wealth is a part of destroying all the powers of the enemy. Write that down. You see that? How many of y'all see that? You see that? You see that? Ma karapa karapa sarata. Repe kerete. Robondo romo sireme. Veromo. See, the, the, the power to get wealth will shut down all satanic power. All demonic power. The power to get well, it, 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 it crushes the head of the serpent with the seed. The seed crushes the head. Jesus is the seed. But Jesus created all these different seeds that you can use so that you can keep on crushing his head. But see, when you need to crush his head with sin, you use the word. When you need to crush his head in your finances. And in every area of your life, if, because Satan stopped the kingdom from manifesting in your life when you're not sowing. So money seed, when I put money seed into my man of God, into my apostle, I'm receiving great grace to not lack anything that's in the word. Acts chapter four said that great grace rested upon them. So while this great grace is on them, Satan can't release any activity in any department of their life. Not mental, not physical, not financial, not in any area. They are all moving in supernatural dominion, supernatural money, supernatural increase, supernatural fire. Everybody on fire for God. Everybody on fire for the Lord. Everybody walking in love because they got their money. They got their finances. They done unlocked the kingdom. They moving in the seed. They listening to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost telling them what to sow. The Holy Ghost giving them power to reap. And they not looking at the world. Because the world don't understand. The natural man think it's foolishness. But unto you is the power of God. Unto salvation. To them is stupidity. But for you is substance. To them is nonsense. But to you, it brings you into sin. This gospel money coming to you right now while you're moving with financial chariot. Honor is an anointing to move with financial chariot. Honor is a prophetic anointing to, for me to see my soul. Honor is a prophetic anointing for me to see my seed. Honor is the cheerleader of sowing. Honor is the hands to possess every prophecy. Honor is a palm in the spirit realm to hold what God said, to grab what God bought, to receive your inheritance. There's no embarrassment or shame that will ever prevail in a sower's life. As you listen to God with the seed, 
God going to listen to you when you decree. Everything that you say shall manifest. If you shall say to the mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, it shall surely obey you. If you decree a thing, it shall be established. All the power of the Holy Ghost is sitting on you for you to live this life of wealth. The Lord told Abram, I shall bless you. That was riches. And he said, but thou shalt be a blessing. That was wealth. When the Lord said, I'm going to bless you. That was the realm of riches. When the Lord said that I'm going to use you to be a blessing. That was the realm of wealth. The blessing of Abraham is when you step into both regions of power. All financial gates and wealth gates be upon you tonight in Jesus' name. As an apostle and prophet of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I stand in his presence, gospel money coming to you now. <laughs>